Welcome back to Back Pocket Game Reviews, guys, and today we're going to show you what a fully set up Retro Pie looks like. So, this is my actual Retro Pie. As you can see, we can go under the different ones here. We have choose, chosen to scrape the different games, which pulls from the International Game Database and puts the box art on, a little description of the game, how many players, all that kind of information, including the release date and genres which is awesome to have. It's essentially like being able to see everything you could possibly want to know about a game. There are very few games I've found that do not pull up on there. But as you can see, I have quite the collection here that I have amassed. So this is what my retro pies currently look like. I might be having to upgrade to a 64 gig card soon, <laughs> just due to the sheer amount of stuff that I have on here. I have almost filled a 32 gig card, which I think is completely insane. Um, most of the older stuff doesn't really take up a lot of space, but the N64 stuff, um, which some N64 games run super smooth and some do not. But on the whole, most of the other games don't take up a lot of space. It's just N64 and PlayStation 1 games that seemingly take up the most. Um, most games run fantastic on this system. Uh, the worst ones, which with these, I have these in a folder, so it actually will only show you the game once you open the folder. I don't know why there's only one Parasite Eve on there. We'll, we'll have to take care of that later. But, as you can see, there's all that. So, Let's boot up a game. Let's see. What do, what do we want to play here? Let's go with Super Mario World. So I'll show you Super Mario World running on the Super Nintendo here. Uh, I'm currently using a Logitech 310 controller with this as well, which seems to run fantastic for what I'm using it for. The only weird thing with the Logitech is because it's not set up like the old school game pads, like the uh, Super Nintendo pad or anything like that. Some of the buttons are in different locations than where they would normally be. Alright. So. Oh yeah, I already got Yoshi. As I said, some of the buttons take a little bit to get used to, um, especially with the way I have this particular controller mapped. Ooh. But, everything runs pretty smoothly, so there's Super Nintendo. Now, let's go over to... We'll do a PlayStation 1 game. Obviously, PlayStation 1 should tax the system quite a bit more than, say, Super Nintendo should. So, let's do... Do Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2. We'll save those settings, um, but that that's that's probably going to be the hardest learning curve that most of you are going to have through this is getting used to how the controls are set up. I didn't even think I had played this one. And again, you're gonna watch me fumble through these controls here. It's 
apparently X is B on my gamepad. But Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 is easily one of the best out of the entire franchise. Too much of an overturn there. The issues tend to come up when running in 64 games, and it's all very depending on the N64 game. So let's <clears throat> boot up Mario Kart here, which this one, ooh, I didn't mean to select the emulator settings so you can tweak certain things about the emulator, like what it's running at. Um, the output, all that kind of stuff. Um, I have the settings for my N64 games running at 480p, just because, I mean, you know, that's, that's what the N64 outputs at anyways. So even upscaling, it's only gonna make it look worse. But everything, as I said, for the most part runs tremendously smooth. Um, even with the Mario Kart games, typically the worst thing you have to deal with with some of these is like sound clipping. Ah. Or, for example, with the Mario Kart games, getting used to how this thumbstick with the controller I'm using use or goes. Oh, I hate you, Mario. Stupid little invisible boo. Worst power up ever. But. For the N64 games that do run smooth, they run fantastically. Like, this looks exactly like how Mario Kart was back when I played it. Um, again, just different controllers, so you do run into some issues with that. All running smoothly. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, so Game Boy runs a little bizarrely on here. Let me pull up Pokemon. I think Pokemon will show you. But I can play Pokemon on the full screen almost as awesomely as I could back in the day when we had, you know, Super Game Boy, which was pretty sweet as well. For those of you who never had a Super Game Boy, let you play all your Game Boy games right there. But I'm also going to show you how to tweak some of the settings here. So this is what it looks like when you are essentially playing a Game Boy game. It's the screen is very white. Obviously the Game Boy used a green and black LED or LCD. I'm pretty sure it was LED. But then your settings are actually all under RetroPie here. You can also get Minecraft made for the RetroPie. There's a couple of games that have been specifically made for it. So you have audio, it'll let you configure any kind of audio through the audio jack, Bluetooth, you want to hook up Bluetooth controllers to it. Um, this will let you change the RetroArc settings. RetroArc is essentially what's running all of the older Nintendo games except for the N64, which the N64 is running through Moopin. 
which is one of the highest rated N64 emulators there are on the market. Uh, this will let you overclock the Raspberry Pi if you wanted to install the camera. Obviously, a lot of that you don't necessarily need. Um, also, there's one of these is where you change the setting for... I want to say it's this one. But I don't think it is. One of these will let you change the settings for... No, it's not. I don't think it's that one. It'll let you change. There's one setting you really want to change if you want your games to run smoother on the N64. And... So it's this one. You want to change this Disp Man X. You want this to be on. This is already on on mine. That's going to allow your N64 games to run a bit smoother. Um, if you want to add any more box art, there's a way to do that too. Also, if you want to add, if you want to include the BIOS folders and be able to drop them into the BIOS category, you're going to want to go to Show IP here. Under Show IP, it'll give you your IP address. Then on your computer, you can wirelessly access your data. So it'll show you all of the folders. Then you can drop all of the BIOS folders onto the actual RetroPie, and that'll make your PS1 games all run and your Sega CD games all run. Um, if you want to scrape the games, which is what it's called to get all the box art, you'd go to Scraper, and then it'll automatically go to Scrape From, the game database, but you can also choose a couple different things, like which ones you want to scrape. Obviously, I don't have anything to scrape, but you would hit Start here. Um, I have a couple that don't have one. Okay, I guess I have one that doesn't have box art, but it's F0, which I cannot find the box art for. You can actually, if you have a mouse and keyboard hooked up, choose the input, retitle it, or you can skip, which I'm just going to skip that. Um, under this, if you wanted to come in here, so all I'm doing is hitting select on the game. You can go to edit this game's metadata. You can scrape an individual game, um, or you can delete the game, but you can also change any of the other stuff that appears in here if any of it is incorrect. But I strongly doubt it is if you're getting it all off of the international game database but as you can see there are a lot of different options here there are a lot of different things that I've got on this there are a lot of games that all run beautifully and smoothly and all show off how awesome the retro pies are and this is essentially like everything that the NES classic was but giving you way more capabilities um, this is just the games that I chose to put on here obviously you can always choose different ones uh, the harder part is going and finding all of the ROMs and making sure they're good ROMs and getting that all taken care of. But guys, if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't already, go ahead and click subscribe. If you turn on that little bell, sometimes it'll notify you when I upload videos. Um, but there's, there's a lot of fun stuff here, and I plan on having a lot of more interesting new content coming for you. So you all enjoy your afternoon, and I'll see you guys around.